Welcome to Spooky Week. A week where we are not really any spookier, honestly, than the average things happening because everything happening is is terrifying and like ghosts and ghouls are are, are a lot more fun. Anyway, what, 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 hang up. In this podcast, don't listen. Go watch Herbert West Reanimator. Have some fun. Um, but if you decide to keep listening to podcasts for some reason, we have a bunch of spooky content for you this week. How was that? How was that introduction, Sophie? Ooh, bad. Ooh. Spooky. All right. Scary. Garrison. Terrified. Yep. Get, get going. Do your thing. Yeah, my my thing. So yeah, mm-hmm. we're doing we're doing spooky spooky week, which we're very excited about. But yeah, every everyone I've told about spooky week, they're like, oh, so it's just a regular week for for the show. I'm like, yeah, I know, pretty, yeah, pretty much. No, no, it's pretty more much. fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it is in a few ways. It is actually going to be more fun because the mm-hmm. the, the 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 spooky spooky mind bending tales. Come on, Garrison. Um, Commit to are, the goddamn yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah spooky mind bending tales. You. Actually, do have do have some more fun than just the solely depressing ones. Yeah, I mean so this that's was a, this was the first theme week that we all agreed upon. Months this was ago. the first theme I week. I was like, yeah. can mm-hmm. we do something around spookiness near Halloween? And everybody unanimously said yes. Yes, yes. So this is the first theme week. Um, we have we we have we have been promising Nut Week coming up eventually. Yeah, <laughs> it I mean, will it's happen. Going to tease. We talk about. Things that made us nut, or where we talk about the legumes, mostly legumes. legumes. Okay, that's fair. Um, but anyway, uh, we should we should start off our first our first spooky tale. Um, so I'm I'm going I'm going to tell a, a very very spooky tale of a of, of an entire French town going going mad over the course of a single week. Hell um, yeah! Prob- pro- probably with the help of psychoactive drugs. And a certain three-letter agency. You know what I think we're going to get to do, Garrison? Ha-ha, my racist French accent! <laughs> I did. Somebody I did online get, I did get a few messages. For that. For, you yes. can't be racist against the French. They're like it's the true. British or Americans. <laughs> like, I did get a few messages saying that fine. your French accent was very racist to the French. <laughs> There is a certain number. It's like the Germans. There's a certain number of genocides after which people get to make fun of your country, and it's not racist. And that number is, let's say, three. <laughs> Honestly, the, the the worst part of this story is that we're probably doing critical support for France. I mean, well, in, in a in a way, well, we'll see. Enough. Honestly, I'm gonna be kind of more critical support to the CIA by the end of this one. Um, <laughs> oh, <so. laughs> Yeah, that's that is the most critical support can be. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. our very spooky tale begins in 1951 in a small, charming French village called Pont Saint Esprit, which is how I'm going to say Saint Esprit. That yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, there um, we go. So not much happened in this little picturesque uh, little little town on the south side of France. You know, uh, on the day we start, it's just like a regular summer day. People are going about their routine, going to their jobs. Kids are playing in the street, enjoying some delicious, freshly baked bread. Um, But suddenly, strange things begin happening. Um, And I'm going to start off with some of the more mild, mild, mild effects here. Mm -hmm. So on on, on August 15th, first uh, dozens, then hundreds of people began uh, first just complaining of nausea, uh, you know, and, and some people with some like stomach and abdominal pain. Oh uh, yeah, they're less, coming up. Yeah, <laughs> less often, l- less often noted. There was a few instances of like vomiting and diarrhea. Um, only about thirty percent of people had diarrhea. That is that is a weirder, weirder thing. That's yeah. a lot of diarrhea. Yeah, that is on like a town wide basis. Three yeah. percent. Yeah, thirty percent. Significant thirty, ex- 30 Sorry. Yeah, 30%. that's a significant strain on the sewage. System. Thirty percent of the people affected, which is going to be like a few hundred versus. If I you know, was taking drugs with a group of friends and a third of them had diarrhea, I would say we might need to go to a hospital. This yeah, is a sign that we have is. taken some of the, that perhaps what we got was tainted. There is, there is, yeah. We'll, we'll be talking about what actually, what yeah. the actual drugs being used here are going to be. But Unless that, we were that's, taking that's like amanitas later. or something where that's not an uncommon side effect, but yeah. So yeah, Sorry, first, continue. first nausea, a little, a, a little bit of vomiting, stomach pains, cramping. Um, 
Hospitals began reporting people experiencing alternating warm and cold waves over their entire body. Mm -hmm. Uh, The British Medical Journal recalls abundant sweating and a disagreeable odor. Um, which I'm guessing the odor is just because there's all those sweating people in the same cramped hospital room. Yeah, sweating in the, in, people shitting in the themselves summer, in a cramped In the summer hospital. heat, yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Um, and they're pe- French, so. <laughs> a lot of escargot sweats, that's all I'm be, saying. I don't want to get more messages saying that I have to stop <laughs> By saying racism. that, I mean, he's going to do it more. By the okay. way, do we know that the diarrhea was the result of of whatever substance, or maybe it's just the wine shits? Again, we French. don't. We there's no way to tell. Um, there's no way to know. So yeah, uh, <laughs> patients began complaining about weird pains and pressure around their neck, which yeah, um, and one of the, one of the most reported symptoms was insomnia, in some cases lasting so, s- several days. Uh, quoting the British Medical Journal. Uh, the first symptoms appeared after a latent period of 6 to 48 hours. The digestive disorders quickly became worse, with burning sensations throughout the entire digestive tract. Some experienced sensations of burning at the anus. A state of okay. giddiness persisted. <laughs> I mean, who's not giddy when your anus is burning, am I right? I do, I do like, like, this is like, this is like the, like the clear side that there's like some, some psychoactive drug going yeah. on, because like your anus is burning, and yet and you're, you're very psyched. giddy. you're psyched. You are <laughs> on board. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like that sign from that, uh, what is that, from uh, Rejected by, what, what, what's that, that cartoonist? Like, My anus is bleeding, but like, you're down, you know? You're down you're, for it, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, you're 110%. Was that a so, John Mulaney impression? No, 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 no. It's uh, who did reject it? Um, because that was bad. It wasn't a John Lenny impression, Sophie. Oh, okay. That's no, just your was, poisoned millennial a car- brain. A cartoon- Don Hertzfeld. Yeah, great artist. Yeah, great artist. Uh, mm-hmm. So these pale and uh, limp patients, uh, still quoting the British Me- Medical Journal, these pale and limp patients showed inconspicuous trembling of the extremities, mm-hmm. and they complained of disorders of the visual accommodation and especially being unable to read. So this this is this well, is the again, more mild. French, so. This is the. <laughs> oh, this could be a long one, here. <laughs> so this is for, for for many people affected. This is where the symptoms stopped um, after suffering for insomnia for a while with you know mild d- disorders of the visual accommodation um, and you know and, and stomach pains and like weird like neck things. After they were able to sleep, that was the sign of their recovery. It's like the ability to sleep again after the insomnia wore off. But in a, in around fifty of the cases reported, the effects were much more intense. Um, I'm going to continue from med- from the medical journal first, and then get into some of the more colorful reporting around the incident. Uh, quoting the med- medical journal again, vivid visual hallucinations appeared. In particular, mm-hmm. themes of visions of animals and of flames. All of these visions were fleeting and variable. In many mm-hmm. of the patients, they were followed by dreamy delirium. Yeah, but that's that's about right. That's actually a pretty good description of like LSA, LSD, those kind of like the yeah, movies always I, get it wrong because you're not usually not like you're not seeing some sort of like visual like cartoon world. It's it's these kind of like fleeting impressions of visions and things in the corner of your eyes. Yeah, that's a pretty good it, description. It, it, especially on lower do- like it is unclear yeah. what exactly they were on because there there definitely can be the more cartoon elements. Oh, I mean, but... it, you can get full open eyed hallucination. Yeah. Like especially the Shogun chemicals will do that. But I don't get it so much with like LSD, LSA. An LSA, yeah. if you want to shit yourself. Ooh, that is that is eat, true. See, right? eat some Hawaiian yeah. baby Woodrose seats. Yeah, get so... them from Home Depot and have yourself a horrible night. <laughs> uh... So the delirium uh, seemed to be systematized with animal hallucinations and self accusation. It was weird, weird terms from the from yeah, the that's medical weird. journal. Self accusations. Yeah, it's. I think I think they're trying to get at ego death, but they don't yeah. have terms for it yet. Um, Either that or that, like, sometimes you're hallucinating, you get, like, overcome with, like, guilt, like, oh, I did this terrible thing, or, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's angry at me, or whatever, like... Con- continuing from the medical journal, uh, so yeah. the self-accusation, and and it was sometimes mystical or macabre. Uh, mm-hmm. In some cases, terrifying visions were followed by fugus, which is a, an old fugue. term for, like, fugues? It says, fugue. it says fugues. Yeah, yeah fugue. fugues. It's, it's pronounced fugue. Yeah, it's it's like it's state. it's like it's like extreme dis- it's ex- extreme dis- disassociation. Yeah, um, yeah, you're kind of zombified a little bit. Yeah, and two and two patients threw themselves out the window. Um, oh boy! 
Yeah. Beef. The delirium was of a confusal kind, which could be interpreted for some moments by a strong stimulation. Every attempt at restraint increased the agitation. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... <laughs> It gets, that is yeah. how restraining people. I've had to restrain a number of people, and it does not calm anyone down. Especially people don't like to be restrained. Especially when you're tripping hard. Yeah, yeah. This sounds like a real, real bad yeah. time. Not um, the, not the thing to do. In severe cases, muscular spasms appeared. Uh, the duration of these periods of delirium was varied. They lasted several hour, several hours in some patients, and in others, they persisted yeah. overnight. So that uh, and then here, here it's, it's we're going to get a little bit darker and then we're going to have more fun. Um, we observed four fatal cases, three men and one woman. Three of these people were old and in bad health. Uh, one of the men was only 25 years old and had, had been in good health previously. They died in a muscular spasm in a state of cardiovascular collapse. I think this is probably yeah. mostly due to how the doctors were handling these patients. Yeah, that sounds mm-hmm. right. I mean, obviously, your your blood pressure and whatnot can elevate when you're, when you're yeah. hallucinating. But yeah. I think it also has a lot to do with... The way they were being handled. Yeah, you're right. Um, the disorders developed more quickly in children, but also left them more quickly. An interesting feature of some of the cases was that the delirium was the first sign to be noted. So it dep- people come up came up on different ways, right? Some, some of them first had weird body feelings. Some of them first started just see- seeing stuff. Um, one other interesting tidbit that we're not going to spend much time talking about, but like around uh, two weeks after this initial incident, some symptoms started to reappear. Uh, either hmm. through like a secondary poisoning or it was like some kind of like acid flashback. Um, yeah, it must. It must because I, I've, I've done a fuckload of acid. I've never had a flashback. Um, I did at one point. I mean, I have like done some damage, and so I have permanent tracers. But it's not like, I, I, my guess is they got. I, I think the idea that there are like acid flashbacks that are vivid hallucinations has been pretty heavily debunked. My guess is they got redosed. I yeah, know. I don't know. I, I might fight you, it but could on be the PTSD. Acid. It, yeah, it's like, it could be that it was traumatic enough that like they're having, they're dealing with PTSD and kind of that's yeah. what's happening. But I don't know. I, and yeah. I think I, I definitely have seen enough reports that would see acid flashbacks definitely actually being a thing in some cases, especially in like the early days of studying these types of drugs in like the sixties. Like the, the the CIA reported a lot of stuff around acid flashbacks around the people that and, they tortured. But I guess CIA, if, if, it's tied, if it's tied to torture, that could just be PTSD stuff. It yeah. could be PTSD. It's also, I mean, one thing you have to note, and I don't know what kind of dose these people were getting. When the CIA would dose people, they were sometimes giving people doses Tons, yeah. people do not take. Like, you do not take that much acid No, yeah, like, like hundreds or thousands or yeah, millions of like, hits. Yeah, yeah like, like, ridiculous, ridiculous irresponsible doses. Yeah. So n- n- now, now we're going to get to some of the some of the more fun descriptions here, which we can actually kind of like, based on our experiences, can actually kind of see like what was actually going on in these people's heads. Um, so basically, we had at least dozens and dozens of people tripping very, very hard. Um, the local postman was doing his rounds on his bicycle when he was suddenly overwhelmed by nausea and wild hallucinations. Uh, quoting him, it was terrible. I had the sense, I had the sensation of shrinking and shrinking and the fire and the serpents coiling around my arms. Yeah. That guy had some other stuff going on. <laughs> the it mailman- is fun. Yeah. Cause the very first acid trip was on a bicycle when Heinrich Hoffman yeah. like made it and dosed himself. He started coming up, I believe it was in Amsterdam, like riding his bicycle, which is like, well, this is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've made uh, something cool. Uh, 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 Why was did. the postman riding a bicycle to deliver packages and Because mail? they're in France. Because it's your France. We do not have the vehicles. It's the 1950s. It's not. There is the wheel only came to France in 1924. I mean, that's... I'm sorry, Postman. So yeah, the mailman fell off his bike and was taken to the taken to a hospital in a nearby town. He was put in a straitjacket and he shared a room with three teenagers who were <laughs> also Christ. tripping. And the teenagers yeah, were chained to their beds to keep them under control. Yeah, that's that's how you. It sounds with horrible, that. right? It's oh, like yeah. the worst I can see way to having trip. Flashbacks to this to being chained to a yeah, bed while Jesus. tripping. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad thing said, to do. Some of my friends tried to get out the window. They were thrashing wildly, screaming, and the sound mm-hmm. of the metal beds and jumping up and down. The noise was terrible. I, pr- I would bet. prefer I would prefer to die than go through that again. Yeah, which, that you know, yeah, totally terrible. This sounds like <laughs> yeah. the, like uh, the worst acid trip yeah, you could go on. That sounds like about the worst way you could have a trip go. For it sure. sounds awful. Um, yeah. So back in the French town, uh, uh, a, a little girl screamed as she was being chased by man-eating tigers. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> a woman sobbed about how her children had been ground into sausages. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So graphic and specific. 
Yeah. <laughs> a large man fanned off a terrific beast by smashing his furniture and using the wood as weapons. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Good for you. A husband and wife ran around chasing each other with knives. <laughs> Again, probably something else going on there. <laughs> My yeah. my guess is we're not just talking the acid in, in that because I have again been on acid a lot around knives and other weapons. I have never chased, chased someone. I've never chased no. someone around with knives on no. acid. But again, that's like, a I couple think, who was on the verge of a knife chase I think, before I think, the acid. I think I think the important part here is that like in 1951 in this French town, like acid wasn't a thing yet. Like like yeah. like like, yeah, like, like sure. hallucinogenic drugs weren't a thing, right? Even yeah. like even like mushrooms weren't popular around this time. No one knew what what the hell was going on. Like. They just think that they're just basically losing their minds. Like, like there's there's no other explanation for what's happening to them. Can we um, just yeah. can no, we just fair. say that the most uh, shocking thing that has come out so far is that when Robert was on acid, he wasn't chasing people with knives. That seems like <laughs> it's, it's honest. Like, depending on your acid trip, you wouldn't want to chase yeah, someone with I've a knife. Wanted, like, it's not that's I mean, not the kind of headspace you're in. We would. We would like during this. The I did it sober. Solstice, yeah, we would we would take a bunch of drugs and grab my AK forty seven and hike out into the woods and we would shoot down a fir tree and we would drag it back to a clearing and we would bury it <laughs> standing up and we would drape it in pig intestines and put a pig's heart on it and then we cover it in gasoline and light it with firecrackers and dance around it like the pagans of old. But there was mm. nothing aggressive about that. No, you 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 very rarely would want to hurt somebody on no. on acid. In my experience, like you you generally generally are at least you're like way more compassionate in in a lot of ways. Um, but if you have no idea what acid is and you're just you're in the 1950s and you're losing your mind and you're seeing weird things, then yeah, I can see how this would maybe cause some other type yeah, of behavior. To you happen. just think that like because, God like, is angry at you. Like, yeah, because like, yeah, again, like, no... like like it's like they're not they're not dosing themselves either. Yeah. Like they're being dosed, right? It's like they don't. Yeah. It's very different where like you're deciding to go on a trip versus this is happening to you and you have yeah. no decision. I think for basically anyone in this position, the logical assumption would be, oh, the devil has taken over our exactly. town and our minds have – we have been infested with demons. Like yeah, that's, what yeah, else yeah. are you going to assume? You're not going to be like, oh, this drug that's just barely been invented and yeah. that nobody really knows about yet except for weird nerds. It must be some version of that that I've taken accidentally. No, you're going yeah. to assume no, like no one demons knows. are in your blood. So uh, one interesting tidbit before we before we go on break um, – even some of the local animals had been affected by whatever poisoned the town. Um, uh, there, there was a what, there was one dog in particular that kept chewing on rocks until its teeth chipped away. I don't like this. And and ducks were behaving very odd. Um, it's described that they they were they were walking around erect and upright like penguins in a line, and they're just like what? very weird weird behavior fr- fr- from ducks. Kind of that's makes the me scariest dose thing our... I've heard so far. That kind of <laughs> makes me want to dose our ducks, Garrison. <laughs> we are not. Do- we're not wasting acid on the ducks. You could waste <laughs> no. a, a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of things you could give ducks. We're not we're not giving ducks acid. That's not the happening. The nice thing about giving ducks drugs is they're all monsters. That is true. They are monsters yeah. and rapists. Yeah, um, every one of them. Yeah. Well, all of the male ducks. So anyway, a, a reoccurring theme was that people were running around wildly and being very fearful of like monstery animals and encroaching flames. Um Sounds like the ducks were having a good time though. They're the just ducks, the around, ducks were like, having a doing their ministry time. of silly walk shit. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know what all these people are bummed about. This is rad. Okay, so w- when you first said that, I heard dogs, and I was like, "That is the most terrifying no, no, thing ducks. I've ever heard." Ducks, ducks is would, much funnier. Yeah. It's like ducks standing like very upright, like penguins walking yeah, around in the I, line. I think ducks might enjoy it. I think dogs are a little too aware of what's going well, on. Well, Garrison did yeah. say yeah. dog. The, the the stone thing was about the dog. But yeah, the, with the the the, the, the dog scary. Ex- yeah, I just don't know that ducks. the dogs enjoy it because, like, I've seen dogs accidentally eat large amounts of pot and whatnot, and, and they, they, are, they 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 are they not get happy. weird. They, yeah, yeah, they they're they're, they're pretty not scared. Not having yeah. a good time. They're they're pre- they're pretty scared. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what is also very spooky? Capitalism. <laughs> yeah, capitalism and all of these spooky advertisements to sell Ooh. you things. Advertisements are also a form of mind control, speaking of the CIA in the 50s. Anyway. They're profoundly damaging. <laughs> We are back from Ooh. the spooky advertisements. Nailed it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I think uh, another another reoccurring factor for why a lot of these people have very similar types of experiences around like snakes, 
um, which we'll talk about later, and like flames, is like with this many people tripping and no one knows what tripping is, I think it's really a- easy for an idea or a fear to spread from one person to another while they're tripping. Um, with like this many yep. people, I think if someone says something, it's going to start happening to someone else, and it's kind of kind of kind of like this like cascading effect where they all uh, develop this very similar fear is because it's almost just like being spread like an infection. Um, so there was there was a uh, one man convinced that red snakes were devouring his brain, and he jumped out a window. <laughs> Oh no! Wait, did he, did he live yeah. through this? He did live. Um, yeah, another... I'm guessing a lot of these. It's it's like France in the 50s, so I'm guessing most of these buildings are not super. They're high not. Up. They're not super high up. No, no. They're like they go, falling a foot or two. Although here we have another one. Um, uh, another man reportedly leapt from a window, yelling, "Look, everyone! I'm a dragonfly!" The <laughs> men, the men broke, the men broke both legs. Aww. <laughs> wow. But he stood up and continued running. <laughs> Fucking rad. <laughs> Wow. King Sigma Sigma behavior. Yeah, absolute. <laughs> no, we're, we're adding Sigma we're behavior. Adding, that we're was adding. This, this, this is a new kind of man. This new kind of dude just man. dropped. The rarest tier. kind of man. <laughs> Look, everyone, I'm a dragonfly. Breaks both legs and keeps running. <laughs> yeah. Look, Amazing. based on the information you've provided us, I can't say he's not a dragonfly. No, he is an abs- <laughs> absolute absolute king. Oh, good for. I, I hope he had a great life. Yeah. <laughs> Um, an, 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 another one saw his heart escape through his feet and besieged a doctor to, to, to try to put it back into place. Yeah, you don't want to have that happen. That That's doesn't sound good. fun. Yeah, um, you, want to keep, you want to keep that somewhere around the middle of your body. Someone sprinted down the lane claiming that he was being chased by bandits with donkey ears. Okay, um, fair enough. At a nearby river, a man was convinced that he was a circus tightrope walker and attempted to balance his way across the cables of a suspension bridge. How do you oh, do? no. It doesn't say. The Wait. report does not tell you. Sounds Why like he did this? great. Yeah, like <laughs> Maybe he, he was not, right. He's, yeah, he's not in the death report. Yeah. So he's clearly not in the death he lived report. through it. And therefore. <laughs> um, an- another, another person did try to die in the river. Uh, he tried to jump into the river uh, only to be saved by his friends. And he was screaming, I am dead. I am dead. And my head is made of copper. And I have snakes in my stomach. And they are burning me. <laughs> <laughs> Such a weird description of like tripping and saying like my head is made of copper. I'm just trying to think of like what was going on, what like what what series of events did did he spiral down in his brain to have that sentence? I just I'm not quite sure. It's it's yeah. it's, it's yeah, I, definitely I can definitely see it happening. I just I just can I'm trying to think like what exactly what would happen to get to that point. It's real real interesting. I, I think some of these are hard because again it's like. These people just think, literally, think they're going insane. Yeah, or that yeah. like this stuff is just actually happening to them. Like you, like when, when you're tripping on acid, you already kind of have the feeling that you, you there is fe- moments where you feel like this is like this is like never going to end. Even oh, though yeah. you, even though you know you know you're on acid, these people don't know that, right? Like these people don't have the reassurance. They're like, no, I took acid. I'm on a drug. This is going to be yeah, over. Yeah, eight hours they or think, so. It's going to. They be. think this is going to last forever, right? Like they think yeah. this this is just the world now. Like this is just one of those Robert Anton Wilson, who is a, a thinker I enjoy a lot, writes a lot about how to calm people down when they've taken too much, and most of his advice is around talking about like. Okay, well, how long ago did you take it? Hey, well, that the good news is that this is going to end here. You know, it's only going to last this long. Like you're you're through this point. Oh, this is the this is the the second hour freakies, and by the third hour, you'll be fine again and enjoying it. Like it's yeah. all about making keeping in people's minds like this is going to pass. So yeah, you're right. Like this is the fucking worst way to take drugs. <laughs> all right, so. Local newspapers uh, and also like in, in national newspapers described uh, described this as uh, among the stricken a delirium rose. Patients thrashed wildly on their beds, screaming that red flowers were blossoming from their bodies. People throwing themselves from rooftops. Men and women throwing their clothes off and running in the streets naked. And children complaining their stomachs were infested with coils and snakes. Oof. Oof. Which I mean, half of that sounds like yeah, that's like a normal good time, just running around the streets naked on acid. Other half's like yeah, that that doesn't seem pleasant with coils and snakes in your stomach. But also like flowers blossoming from your body. I can I can I can understand that kind of sensation. Um, but like it definitely it definitely wasn't all horrible and night like nightmarish. We 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 already mentioned the giddy people with burning anuses. Um, <laughs> but for like the full on tripping folks. Uh, according to the New York Times, there was, there was reports of people like hearing heavenly choruses and seeing you know bright colors. The world looked beautiful to them. Um, apparently, the head of the farming co-op wrote hundreds of pages of like enlightened tripping poetry. 
<laughs> he, See, he, like, that, 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 that guy must be sick as shit, because knowing nothing, he starts tripping, not knowing he's tripping, it's just like, time to make some fucking art. <laughs> like, you, you know what this head state is good for, writing some shit. He just like went to his cabinet and wrote poetry. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> awesome. That's a guy... I, I'll bet he handled just everything that life threw at him well. <laughs> like, like that's, that says a lot about you when you're like, oh, demons have infiltrated my brain. Guess I'm going to hang out in my cabin and write some poems. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of pages. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, like, I, I, could har- I could hardly write shit on acid. I cannot imagine trying to write poetry. I mean... God. I've done a lot of creative stuff on acid. Creative stuff, yeah. I just feel like, like specifically, like reading and typing can can be hard at certain mm. points. You know, if if you're like coming down, it, it can be easier. But like, as it's you're not doing, really as... good for like writing. It's good for ideas that you yeah. later can flesh out into writing. But yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, you know, because this was you know no one was going on, many people were taken to local asylums in straitjackets and tied onto beds, making things. Uh, undoubtedly yeah. worse for people yeah. tripping. Um, it's one of those things I can't even be angry at them because, like, they don't know what's going. I know, on. like, like they, you have they, no they, idea they don't, what's, they don't what's going on. <laughs> like, like nobody the whole, does. The, the whole like every attempt at restraint increase the agitation line is like horrifying yeah. from the concept of like you're tripping. You 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 don't know what's going on. And people are tying you down to beds, making you feel like you're even more stuck in this permanent yeah. state of delirium. It's just it just it's, it's the worst nightmare. Yeah, all of this is horrible. <laughs> yeah. The, the 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 mayor of the town said, like, I've seen healthy men and women suddenly become terrorized, ripping their bedsheets, hiding themselves beneath their blankets to escape the hallucinations. So, yeah, it's it's if, if, if you if you if you don't know what's going on, pretty, pretty, pretty scary, e- except for the poetry guy. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. Um, yeah. Making the best so, of it. So, but by, by the time the effects had subsided for everyone affected, uh, which was around like a few days after the initial reported like nausea, like you know, not it, it it didn't affect everyone at the same time. You know, some people got dosed later on. It's it, it's unclear what ex- what exactly because this is the fifties. We didn't have a great idea of the exact timeline of of events of like when the first effects were felt and like how all the stuff was spaced out. But this whole incident aras- lasted around like a few days uh, for like everyone ev- everyone totaled. Um, it was reported that anywhere between like 300 to 500 people had felt the effects. Um, you know, around 50 feeling very, very extreme, like open eye, like hallucinations of objects that aren't even there, like like very extreme hallucinations. Um, and and four people did die in connection to the poisoning. Um, it, at least four people died. It's again, it's unclear for exact numbers for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, an investigation into the sudden outbreak of the madness was promptly underway. Uh, town officials wanted to get to the bottom of this as quickly as possible. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah, you would, you would, you would want to figure out what was happening yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the blame fell onto a single batch of bread. What? So uh, uh, among uh, the, the, the common denominator among those affected is that they yep. all allegedly consumed bread yeah. from one specific baker. Yep, that's how um, it works. He he was accused of using ergot contaminated rye flour, and yep. he was arrested and uh, temporarily imprisoned. Um, also, a nearby miller that he got the flour from was also arrested and given some of the blame. Um, the the funny part is is that a- a- around this time, the French government had a very top down grain distribution system that rigidly controlled everything about where the grains were milled, where they oh, were yeah. sent, and what bakers could use which flour. So bakers had no choice in what type of flour to use or what type of grain they could use in baking. It was all decided by other people. Yeah, because so, France, bread is like, it's a real big deal in it's France. It's pretty, pretty, pretty yeah. important, yeah. For the record, just like ergot poisoning, there are a lot of cases of like different like dancing manias and whatnot in like the medieval in medieval Europe where like whole towns will be well, everyone will start like dancing or like hallucinating. And, you know, they always came down as like these people assumed apocryphal stories about like demon possessions or whatnot. And now a lot of the suspicion is like. Oh yeah, some air got gotten. No, the yeah, it was it was everybody a, was just kind of tripping. <laughs> air <Ergot laughs> poisoning. It seems like one of the rougher trips to go on. It's yeah, not um, super clean. It's no. I mean, I, I've done LSA, which I think is similar. It's in similar that it's, to air gotten. Yeah, ways, they're yeah. tryptamines that are like really rough, and it's. I would not don't don't do LSA. <laughs> No Hawaiian b- baby Woodrow seeds for if you're for, going for the to take LSA, then actually like. Synthesize it you out can, of Hawaiian baby you, wood roast, which is a felony. It, and, yeah. Which is a felony. It is a felony. Um, 
but you can just buy Hawaiian baby wood rose seeds and eat them and you will have maybe the worst trip of your life. Great advice from from the pod. Um, yeah. So yeah, on 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 <laughs> on the on the on, on the rye and ergot topic, uh, the the past growing season was especially wet, and ergot fungi did grow across the yeah, country's baby. rye fields. Um, but the amount of ergot on the rye and the amount of rye used in baking was thought to not be enough to induce any any type of poisoning. Um, in fact, the the last time er, uh, like ergot poisoning had struck France was back in eight, was back in eighteen sixteen. So almost like a century and a half. Uh, b- before this incident, and no, about no, a century and, if it's the fifties, right? A little less than a century. No, th- so it, the, the the last incident was eighteen sixteen. This was nineteen. Oh, eighteen. I thought you said eighteen sixty. No, no. I, I, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. So like, yeah. A, a century and a half ago, um, and no other towns, any, and no other part of France was affected by anything similar to this. Um, so the ergot thing is kind of iffy. Um, it, it but the ergot explanation was the only thing that doctors and investigators could come to due to like you know the, their their limited knowledge around brain altering substances and just pressure from town officials to get to the bottom of this so that they had something to blame and people could like move on um but you know as a result not much evidence really backs up their backs up the ergot claim and a lot of experts today kind of deem it bunk um it, it doesn't yeah, there's it, and, and there's a bunch of like um there's this thing kaikion that the Greeks would take that was like this Greek hallucinatory thing that they think it was because they were putting grain and wine and it might have been ergot poisoned, but also like people enjoyed it. And so there's a lot of debate over whether or not it could have been ergot, but I don't know. Um, I don't know what else. Is there a th- are other other theories about what it might have oh, been if it wasn't oh, ergot? Oh, Rob. Oh, yes, oh, there is. Oh, boy. Is it the CIA? <laughs> we're is gonna, it the CIA we're, garrison? We're going to get to it. So yeah, it, it it doesn't really make much sense that the high amounts of ergot rye would only be in one batch of grain used in a single batch of bread from just one bakery in one small town. Doesn't doesn't really make sense. Um, other explanations um, that people have come to includes like mercury poisoning and overuse of other fungicides. These have been mostly disproven. Yeah, that doesn't um, seem like mercury poisoning. No, but th- th- speaking there's... as a guy who likes to drink some mercury, you know. <laughs> oh boy, um, merc on. So yeah, so there's a lot of other theories around like fungicides being used, but those have been kind of disproved by some people, but others still point to them as possible explanations. But but there is one other theory that we will focus on that features two of my favorite things. Okay. Uh, LSD and oh, the yeah. 1950s CIA. Because if you're going <laughs> to pick a CIA, the, the 1950s, 1950s one, CIA they had the, the most best. fun. They oh, had the most God. fun. Right? Like, and you know who else has a lot of fun, Garrison? Who, who? And who is also be? the 1950 CIA. Whomst? Our sponsors. Oh, really? Good yeah, it for could them. happen here is sponsored only by the 50s CIA. Only, by the, <laughs> only the one from the 50s. <laughs> yeah, when you order any of our prod- products, they will come to your house and inject you with 7,000 hits of LSD. Hey, free! Hey! That, is, that sounds like a great deal, honestly. You're saving a lot of money. You are saving. Yeah. That, that is a lot of free acid. A lot of acid for the amount of money you're spending. Mm-hmm. Look, that's this a is, lifetime. This is... you, you won't do more acid, that's for nope. sure. You're, that, that's acid for life. You yeah. won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might you, you pro, pro, probably you won't have to do you won't you won't have to do any expenses ever again. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll, you will, you'll um, survive. You'll just be a very different person by I the mean, end of the. Yeah, experience. you you won't survive. Your body will. Yeah, no, someone, someone else, else will be inhabiting it at the end of that trip. <laughs> someone else will wake up. So right, speaking ad, of waking up, here's ads, all the ads. products. Ads. Yeah. So 1950s CIA, um, wild time. Um, Great time. In 2009, uh, Hank P. Alberelli, is an, an, an American writer and journalist, released a book called A Terrible Mistake, which focuses on the suspicious death of a CIA scientist named Frank Olson, who worked uh-huh. on the CIA mind control experiments during the late 40s and early 50s. While researching the book, uh, Alberelli claims to have come across a number of old CIA and White House documents referencing the Pont Saint Sprite incident, and he claims that the village was the target of a CIA experiment on the mass effects of LSD, and that around the time that Frank Olson wanted to sever his ties with the Army and CIA, Frank started talking about his participation in the experiment, which may have led to the government offing Olson. So I, I know that is a lot, and it is slightly more than just a speculation. We're going to get into the evidence here shortly. Um, but by now, it's pretty well known that throughout the 40s, 50s, and 60s, 
Both the U.S. Army and the CIA tried to use hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drugs, such as LSD, as both an offensive weapon and as a way to make, like, psychic super soldiers. There's programs like MK Ultra, MK Naomi, Project yeah. Bluebird, Project Artichoke. Um, Project lots of these, Bluebird? Lots, lots of these things were trying to find different ways of using LSD for, like, yeah. offensive and defensive means. Um some of the interest was promoted by uh, was was prompted by reports of the Soviet Union doing experiments with drugs around the same time. Also, stuff around like you know hype, like like uh, like you know, psychic powers and and hypnosis. This was very popular around this time for mm-hmm. for lots of different intelligence agencies. Um, but so, Al Borelli um, uncovered a report from 1949 by the director of the Edwood uh, Arsenal, which many uh, which which was where many U.S. government LSD experiments were carried out. And this report stated that the uh, army should do everything, everything as po- everything, everything possible to launch so-called field experiments using this drug. And later in his uh, 2009 book, Albrelli claims that he found references to a government document with the label "Re Pont Saint Esprit and F Olson Files S O Span Slash France Operation File Inclusive Olson Intel Files Hand Carry to Bellin. Tell him to see to it that these are buried." Um, this document does exist. Like we, 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 like we, 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 we do have this label on on this document. Um, but like the actual contents of the document are are gone. By right? this is this is this is this is just Great. like a label that is being referenced. Yeah, as we a just piece know of there thing. was a thing with this yeah. title. Great. Oh boy. So the document label references Frank Olson and David Bellin. So Bellin was the executive director of the Rockefeller Commission, created by the White House in the uh, mid-70s, to investigate abuses carried out worldwide by the Central Intelligence Agency. Mm-hmm. So Alberelli believes that the, uh, that the French town LSD incident, um, which is like the, the, the Pont Saint Esprit, which is the name of the town, and the F. Olson files mentioned in, in the document would definitely show that if the document hadn't been buried, as it was said in the, in the label, the CIA, it, it would show that the CIA was experimenting on the townspeople by dosing them with what he thinks was LSD. Um, now, there is also a bit more to it than that. Um, using FOIAs, he got a hold of another CIA document, a two-page report from 1954 detailing a conversation between a CIA agent and a representative of the Sandoz Chemical Company. So the this, the Sandoz base was the place where Albert Hoffman invented LSD in 1938, mm-hmm. um, hmm. and it was it was it was only a few hundred kilometers away from Pont Saint Esprit, the, 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 the town where this happened. So the the, the 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 chemical company was actually pretty pretty close, relatively to like Europe. Um, and it was also the only place where LSD was being made at the time, and they were providing both the army and the CIA with a lot of a lot of acid. But I mean, they, they're also giving it to, like they were also giving it to universities. They gave lots to Timothy Leary initially. They sure did. They were they were they did they, they, give quite a lot to Tim Leary. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were giving it out to a lot of different universities uh, and research people, yeah. but including the U.S. government. So the CIA the CIA agent wrote. Um, in this report, uh, that was like he was detailing a dinner he had with this representative of the chemical company, and he reported that after having several drinks, the scientists started talking about the Pont Saint Esprit incident. The Sandoz official blurted out, "The Pont Saint Esprit secret was that it was not the bread at all." Continued the Sandoz official. For weeks, the French tied up our laboratories with analysis of the bread. It was not the grain ergot; it was a diethyl laminate. Sorry, it's it's the the last part of the LSD name. Yeah, diethyl acid. D- yeah, the, the diethylaminide like compound. Yeah. So yeah, the surgic diethyl acid is what LSD stands for. So yeah, he the 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 scientist said that it was it was like it was like basically an LSD like compound. Um, so that's that was the that was a report detailing a dinner that a CIA agent had with this scientist. Um, and that document was uncovered. That was it was from like the fifties. Now this 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 next part has a little bit less proof to it because there's no documents backing this up. But Alberelli also claims that during his digging, two former CIA researchers reached out to him and revealed that uh, revealed some details, of, well, some possible details of the method of the poisoning. They told him that the village was subjected to an air blitz of pulverized LSD. Holy shit! What? They, they acid bombed him. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. That's fucking based. <laughs> so <laughs> to force that's the townspeople into taking a substance through the air, according yeah. to the researchers, this manner of, distrib- of this manner of distribution proved mostly unsuccessful, um, forcing the CIA to move on to phase two, which was contaminating local food. 
So apparently, the air if the if the, if the air blitz was a thing, it didn't it work didn't super well. It. Yeah, that, um, that's that's a bummer. Yeah, I know. Although I actually, was, we will I was talk about, about to have Sophie buy us a plane. We will, we will, talk, we will, talk, we will talk about this later. But um, the CIA did uh, do more air blitzing um, uh, of of acid in New York City. Actually, they would ride around in cars. Um, in like poorer and poorer, more like multicultural areas, um, shooting God, LSD Jesus. out of the back of the car to see what would happen to people. I mean, <laughs> take out the racism, and that really is a dream job. Just <laughs> driving around cities, air dosing people with acid at random, smoking cigarettes, probably. Oh my so, God. So, with the conclusion drawn that it was one of the town's bakeries being the source of the poisoning, Al- Albrelli says it was possible that LSD was put in or onto the bread. Um, so yeah. <laughs> and, uh, also, uh, lots of the scientists, dis- uh, lots of the scientists dispatched to investigate the poisoning after it took place were actually from the Sandoz Chemical Company. Um, they studied the situation for, like, two or three weeks, um, and gave the explanation that would later be kind of disproven, uh, that it was ergot poisoning, which they, they told to town officials and the British Medical Journal. Um, what, what, what no one knew at the time was that, one, the existence of LSD in the first place, um, and two, that Sandoz was the company making it and giving these drugs to the U.S. Army and to the CIA. Um, and apparently Albert, apparently Albert Hoffman himself went to the town to investigate this incident. Um, so yeah, and one last thing on like the physical evidence side of things. Um, Alberelli also found an undated White House document that appeared to be part of a larger file that had been sent to members of the Rockefeller Commission, uh, containing the names of two French nationals who had been secretly employed by the CIA and made direct references to the, quote, Pont Saint-Esprit incident. Um, also, it was link- uh, the, the document linked uh, former CIA biological warfare expert and the chief of the Fort Derrick's Special Operations Division. So those are all Boy. places that they were experimenting with a similar kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we, we we have mentioned the Rockefeller Commission a few times now. Uh, if you remember the names, uh, uh, Frank Olson, the guy, the, one of the CIA researchers on LSD, and uh, David Bellin, where they were they were they were on the label of that missing document. Uh, so, but Bellin was the executive director of the White House Commission to investigate the CIA's abuses and crimes, which was called the Rockefeller Commission. Uh, it was formed by President Ford in 1975 to investigate abuses and other activities by the CIA. And a few other intelligence agencies that were operating within the states. Um, so the Rockefeller Commission revealed not only like it, it, so the reason why we know about MK Ultra was because of the Rockefeller Commission. This is this is how we know this was a thing. Um, so it not only revealed stuff about like MK programs around MK Ultra, but it also revealed the details of the CIA dosing their own scientist Frank Olson with LSD and possibly killing him. Um, there's also like there's like a Netflix series about this called uh, Woodward, which I haven't I haven't actually watched yet, so I don't know how good or accurate it is. But they did they did make a series a few years ago about the death of Frank Olson mm. um, and all of the weird sketchy stuff surrounding both his job and yeah. and, and 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 his death. Yeah, um, we do love the CIA, <laughs> folks. Uh huh. <laughs> so the, the the commission also uh, concluded that the head of the CIA's LSD program, Doctor Sidney uh, Gottlieb. Uh, destroyed all of the drug program's records in 1973 to hide the details of possibly illegal actions. And he was personally involved in the torture of Frank Olson. Uh, 20 years after Mr. Olson's death and 10 years after the LSD experiments were halted, uh, Dr. Gottlieb ordered the destruction of all the records of the program, including a total of 152 separate files. This came shortly after other reports that uh, that that records were being destroyed by Richard Helms, the, the 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 then director of Central Intelligence. So it's undoubtedly true that the CIA was up to up to some shit involving LSD yeah. around yeah, the around the exact time period of this French town incident. Yeah, um, you're cert- it's certainly not like you're not coming out of nowhere suggesting the CIA may have dosed all these people. No, because but, but they yeah, did it and, to and, a bunch of folks. If they didn't do it here, they'd done similar shit. So, so, and it's, so, it's also, it's also worth mentioning at this point that like, th- this is like the point where the CIA is also running this like enormous heroin network out of France as like, basically, basically they have this whole, they have this deal with the French where they're like, okay, so the French mob can like, basically move all the heroin they want in exchange. They'll like stop the communists from taking control of the point of Marseilles. 
And so this is this is all also going on like at the same time that they're doing the LSD stuff. It's great. Yeah. So, so there's there's some historians that think the LSD theory does not hold enough water. Um, Stephen uh, Kaplan is a U.S. historian specializing in the French food history, and a, a, the author of the 2008 book Cursed Bread, which follows this incident. Um, he says that he is. Uh, I have numerous objections to this paltry evidence that this uh, that this against the CIA. First of all, it's clinically incoherent. LSD takes effects in just a few hours, whereas the inhibitants where the inhibitants showed symptoms only after thirty six hours or more. Furthermore, LSD does not cause the, di- the digestive elements or the vegetative effects described by the townspeople. Um, and so, to both those claims, I say. They're not necessarily true. Um, it's, it's, it's unclear how soon the delirious effects took place. For some people, they were the first effect felt. Um, so the whole thing about like the effects only taking effect after 36 hours, that's not, that's not necessarily true. Um, and also, LSD can definitely have nauseating or digestive effects. Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's 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 not that's yeah. And and but but like there were other types of symptoms that are not common for what we think of as like modern LSD. Yeah, but again, so. this is the 1950s, and we don't know what they were actually on. It did. It, it's maybe not. It may not be what we think of as like LSD now. It could be slightly. You know, that this is a whole class of psychoactive drugs that's un- unclear what they were all actually being dosed with. Yeah, who the fuck knows what they were being given, and who the fuck knows what the actual like dose amount was? Yeah, we have no we no idea. Um, and it's also you know I think it's leery was the origin of the phrase that like the things that determine what happens on a trip are set, setting, and dose. So your mindset, where you take it, and who you take it around, and the dose, and uh, the fact that these are somewhat unique symptoms could be to the fact that like a. Other people taking acid have never taken it this way, where in this, your in whole this town context, is all dosed yeah. at once without knowing what acid is. Like, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, K- Kaplan's other objections revolve around like the delivery system. He says it, it's absurd this idea of transmitting a very toxic drug by putting in by putting it in the bread. As for pulverized to get for ingestion through the air, that technology wasn't even possible at the time. Most compellingly, why would they choose the town of, of Pont Saint Esprit to conduct these tests? It was half destroyed by the U.S. Army during fighting with the Germans in the Second World War. It makes no sense. And and to that I say. That makes it the perfect town for the CIA to fuck with. Yeah, I mean, like, the CIA yeah, that's like, dose. That's actually, yeah, like, yeah they, they generally would choose to dose someone with acid because it sounded funny. Like, yeah, like, they yeah. didn't give like, a shit. I think the fact that this town was already kind of like only half inhabited and half destroyed by the by the Second World War that makes it the perfect town to fuck with. Like, yeah, and also they also the CIA and the government very much did have the means to try to distribute stuff via the air because we can see other CIA we can see other documents around the time of them doing this to specific areas of of New York City. They also tried to poison the entire New York subway with LSD in the fifties, but that was shut down by higher ups in in the Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, God, what a time that would have been. But uh. but Cap uh, but but Kaplan isn't sure or got the responsible either. Um, he says that ergot ur- ur- contamination would not have worked because it doesn't make sense that only one sack of grain would have been affected. Um, and he says if it was ergot, the, the effects would have been way more widespread. Yeah, that does sound... He yeah. rules out LSD in the grounds of the symptoms that people suffered, although similar, don't quite fit what we modernly think of as the drug. Also, I don't, I, don't, I don't think Kaplan's ever taken LSD, so I don't think yeah, he actually I, knows what yeah. he's talking about. <laughs> I think he's right um, about it probably not being ergot, but I don't think he knows much yeah, about he, he, he also, he also, He also points out that LSD probably wouldn't have survived the fierce temperatures of the baker's oven, although uh, Alborelli counters that it could have been, that LSD could have been added after the fact to, to like the surface of the bread. Sure, yeah, you could just drop it on. You could just drop it on with, like, with like liquid blood. Which would also ex- yeah. explain how the effects were so different from person to person, because yep. one person may be having a whole drop of LSD, where some may, be, may only have like a tiny little, like you know, speck of like speck of like like moist liquid. For on sure. That, on the, so it, it, that can explain some things. But you know, this is still pretty much a mystery. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's very clear. It, it, this it, it very much very well could have been some kind of hidden LSD CIA experiment, um, or the CIA could have just been you know interested in studying. What happened in the town since they were also doing studies into psychoactive su- substances at the time? Um, it could be either or. Um, and that's where it's spooky because you'll never know. Ooh. Ooh. So, yes, that is, th- that is the spooky incident of a French town basically thinking Bad. that they lost their minds. And then, uh, you know, they. You eventually- love to see it. Sh- sh- do we? <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> it is a little funny. It it's is true. definitely a little funny. Um, it's, it is a great example of like the worst way to trip <laughs> yeah that uh that's that's pretty high up there um anyway critical support to the cia for dosing <laughs> random people with acid 
always one of my favorite sets of stories. You you love to see it. So yeah, tune tune in tune in tomorrow for more spooky tales. For another spooky story. <laughs> and you can follow the spooky social media that poisons your brain at On ac- Twitter. Happen here, pod. Com. Happen here pod and cool zone media, which yes, Twitter will poison your brain. That is just as spooky. Um goodbye. Way more spooky. Way worse for your brain than surprise. CIA acid, to be honest. Ooh. The acid wears off. Thank you.